hello viewers welcome back so in the first in the second video we looked at the general settings of excel settings so in this video we are going to look at the formula settings so as we mentioned we want to move from the general settings over to the formula settings now and we can use the up and the down arrows on the keyboard to do that navigation so for instance we can go down to formulas back to general settings etc so this is what they're meaning we can use these down arrows to move from this to that like that like that so now what we want to focus on is the formula settings so as we've seen through that navigation arrows on our left hand side let's now land here on formulas as we've done and discuss some of the of these settings that we can see so let's look here at our right hand right hand side and we try to look at the let's try to to focus on these calculation options the calculation options these are the ones that we are talking of the one that are within here all of these are calculation options we effect, effectively have two extremes we have two extremes where we could set these settings at the bottom we could set everything to be completely manual these are the extremes that we are talking about we can actually set it to be at the bottom here manually to do everything manually so being completely manual in this case we could need to manually update in other words we could need to manually click to update the file and usually we do this by hitting the f9 shortcut that is what we do by manual placing in other words everything to be adjusted needs to be done manually in other words we have to hit the f9 key but this is not actually our preferred setting our preferred setting would be up here automatic mode this one automatic mode so this this way we can be assured that the file is always completely up to date at all times that would be our preferred mode so generally it's our recommendation that you should stay at it you should stay on automatic mode it's generally our recommended mode to be in the automatic mode in other words everything that we need to work on should be updated by itself at all times the only time that you would shift down to this setting in the middle the one you're seeing here automatic except for data tables the the only time that you would shift down to this setting in the middle is if you had to file if maybe you had two files with lots of data tables that were really consuming the computer processing power in this case this may be more efficient but for us we are going to keep it in the automatic mode so that's what we we actually prefer we prefer to be in the automatic mode but even if even if you put it you put it at this point automatic except for data tables at least it is it is all the time automatic only when it is on those data tables that it will not be automatic so we can either ways write but just you know what we have to what we have to be doing is that we have to be on the automatic mode even that one is automatic it will only not be automatic when you have data tables so either way of the two setting is right so as you have 
as you can see we have activated the shortcut by using the mouse but also use the keyboard you can also use the keyboard to do that in order to use the keyboard you look for the letter that is underlined in the word in other words when you're looking at all these words up here there is a letter that has been underlined from this automatic we have a is underlined from this we have d is underlined from manual we have m that is underlined from recalculate work workbook before saving we have this w underlined so the reason as why well you are seeing those those lines or you are seeing some letters underlined is to guide you on the shortcuts that you should use for example here we have as we've seen we have a underlined over here the d is underlined over here and down here we are seeing that this m is underlined so what we are going to use what that means is that we are going to use the alt key when you click the alt key that alt key to get to those letters you will see that when you press the alt key maybe we can just put it to that point we say alt d so this is how we actually change some of the things you are seeing this alt m so that's how basically we change some of those items so finally over here we have a setting that says enable enable italic calculations some financial models have circular loops or circular reference, references in them and this setting is needed in order to, for the computer to be able to solve the circular references or the circular loops so if this is not active it means it won't actually work out so for for those financial models that have that circular reference referencing or that those circular loops then we need to have that checked so if it is checked then it will help us to be able to solve the circular loops now what we what, what we are going to recommend is that you uncheck this section selection and you can see that i is under underlined so if you uncheck it this you are seeing that this i is underlined so when you place alt i when you place that alt i it will take you to that same point and you find that you have that highlighted so and the reason as why we prefer to have this unchecked is if we create a circular a circular calculation in the workbook then having this unchecked will generate an error message which acts as a little bit of an alert just to let to let us know that we have created a circular calculation because if we leave this one checked it means we will not know that we have actually gotten a circular calculation but if we leave it that way when it is unchecked it means the software or excel will, uh, will 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 make an error or will make an alarm to let us know that we have actually done what we call iterative calculation but if you want the answer to come out without bringing that error then you can leave that checked so that's the only reason as to why we prefer to have that one unchecked so that we can be able to have that reminder that what we are doing is a circular calculation so that's what we are focusing on under workbook calculations now finally down here if we scroll to the bottom if we scroll we scroll down to the bottom you are going to see that we have the ability to enable 
background error checking we have the ability here to enable background error checking now if you have error checking if you have this error checking enabled in other words if that enable background error checking is active in other words it is checked then excel is going to is going to flag errors using a flag of this color and by default this is green because this is the color that we are we are seeing inside there the color that is here is green that is by default but you can do but you can you can actually have the ability to change that color to any color that you wish you can actually change this color maybe to yellow to red to blue whichever color but it is by default green so that's the that's the flag that you will see which will show that there is an error so now with error checking enabled excel will flag anything below this line as an error and one thing that we find above this is that it can be a little bit overwhelming and excel can actually flag a lot of things which are technically not errors and this may lead us to ending up with a lots of green flags appearing in the files that we are working in so you may want to uncheck some of these items for instance if we if we were to uncheck all all of these ones and uncheck up here some of these items that like the way you are seeing them down here they are all going to be looking as if they are errors even when they are not but if you uncheck that then it means some of these and you remove some of these you may find that they are not going to be bringing errors so unchecking that is helping us to avoid those unnecessary red green flags that may come up as errors even when they are not errors so so if we try to if you want to maybe to uncheck all of these these ones that you are seeing here we uncheck all of them and we uncheck the other one what we are going to be having is it's going to actually that would actually that would actually leave just cells containing formulas that result in an error as the error check so this might be a prudent way to set up the error checking so that it doesn't flag too many unnecessary things so for us we prefer not to enable the error checking and we actually check this off so we put this we check it off because of the reasons as i have told you if you leave this one on like that these are the the rules that we are going to find that are going to be in terms of the 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 excel is going to raise flags but if we only leave this the first one cells containing formulas that result in an error and we leave maybe that one it will create something that will help us to find that we are we actually have an error because some of them they are going to bring those red flags and you think you've made a mistake yet they are not actually mistake so that might be prudent might be might be a prudent way to set up the error checking so so that it doesn't flag too many unnecessary things so for us we actually prefer to enable not to enable the error checking and you actually check this off but it would be your choice as to whether or not you turn that feature on in this software so 
it's up to you to just leave it the way you are seeing or you can actually leave it unchecked either way is going to be right so again just for a quick recap the main things in this formula section would be would be to keep on automatic mode unless you have a lot of data tables if you find that in your data you have a lot of data tables then what you have to do is you have to go with this second one but if you don't have data tables then it means you go by the automatic that is the most the most important thing from the formula setting because if you have lots of data tables in this case you could switch down to automatic except for data tables because if you make those data tables automatic it will bring wrong results and therefore you make wrong analysis so by default you want to disable the the italic calculations and you would prefer not to use error checking down here and if you were to use the error checking make sure that you only check off the line item down here that actually want excel to highlight that you that you want actually that you want actually excel to highlight because some of these that you are seeing they are checked they are some of the things they may not necessarily mean they are errors so this one you can uncheck them if you are to use this maybe you just leave only this if you are to use this you uncheck all of these like this like this all of them and just leave only this one but for now i'm just going to leave them the way the way they are so let's jump ahead and we will see in the next video for we try to to see other other settings other than those two that we've looked at because those two that we have actually looked at they are the main settings that we we need to put more emphasis on but we are going to also look at other settings that we need to set up in our excel setting so we we'll see you there